All right, everybody. Welcome to BO Boys for Tuesday, August 27th. Fuck it. It's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. And I'm Pat. My back from jolly old London town. Back from top of the morning to ye, Ireland. I am here and I've got to show it off. Where is it? It's hard with it. The, the there we go. There is my flag right there, the British flag on my shirt. You could see it. Uh, I mean, well, you could see it if you, of course, are watching us on the Bo Boys YouTube channel. You saw mm -hmm. me just show off the British flag on my shirt while Clayton wears a Reagan movie twenty four hat. This is the show, everyone. This is the Bo Boys. So, Pat, quickly, uh, it, you missed two shows in a row, which is okay now. It's officially I, okay now. I haven't missed any shows. I was on both of those shows. I've listened back to those episodes, and I heard myself oh, okay. on both shows. That's so, technicality. So everybody knows that's a technicality, but we're, we're not going to get into that. We're not getting into that because now I, it's okay to miss two shows in a row. It's okay. I want What I want to say is yes. that I want to thank Aaron for mm. sitting in. Yeah, two consecutive shows, the consecutive yep. shows that you missed for, for and, the minutes that I wasn't on air, though. I was on air for significant minutes in both episodes. But yeah, well, she was on air for other minutes. Definitely. That's more contributed to your long windedness than anything else. But it what I would like to minutes. what I would like to say is that I'm Aaron did a great job mm -hmm. filling in for you. Yep. For those as minutes, a I was guest on host, yet. as mm -hmm. a guest host. Mm -hmm. And uh as with no talk of replacement, only mm -hmm. filling in for somebody who was not there. Yep. And it was refreshing to have a different voice on the show and to talk to somebody else. But I think everybody would agree that it's great to have you back in America. Yes. With American dirt on your loafers i'm sure you wear loafers and i so, walk on pavement I, I avoid the dirt roads yeah Inle so, unless i'm in london town and it's you know horse and buggy and you go over dirt roads towards a, a castle it's very quaint sure yeah. it's great that you're very excited to be in such a backward place but i just wanted to to usher you back in and uh you know thank everybody who continued to listen and uh will continue to listen so yes I mean, Aaron did a great job. I I I, I tip my cap, my bowler's cap to uh, Aaron Rose Foley Chan, and what a great job she did in the minutes that I was not on air, that I was on air for other significant minutes in both those episodes. But she did great. You know, it was a John Stewart Larry Sanders situation. You know, it was it was it was that type of deal. Okay. Well, I mean, you're. I mean, hey yeah. now, Larry. Hey now. Back. Yeah, no flipping. So, do you want to talk a little bit about your trip, or I, I mean, I what do you think of some of the points I raised on my significant minutes that I was on air in those episodes? I mean, the the blood popcorn. You know, I had this black pudding. It's dipped in blood, sausage dipped in blood. What do you, I mean? Do you think this could come to the states to the U.S. theater concession stands? Blood popcorn. Would you eat? Popcorn dipped in uh, animal blood, dried, delicious, upcharge, all that. Do you think Absolute, we could bring absolutely this Absolutely not. America, the reason we fought to be independent mm -hmm. from your beloved England. Yep. Great Well, so we didn't have to eat blood. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to eat blood. We could keep blood inside ourselves mm -hmm. all right that's 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 what i believe i believe so that you don't want a dispenser instead of and you keep the butter dispenser but you add one other dispenser next to it and it pours out quick drying blood for your popcorn so you could have you know just like they have with the on the little sausage bites in 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 uh in ireland I mean, I think that maybe novelty wise for certain films, it would work mm -hmm. as a going concern. No, but yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, it, you're saying like this if, could have juiced the take for the Banshees of Inish uh, a year or two ago. You know, that would have been a great novelty popcorn, uh, you know, concession item for that run. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that would have probably doubled the, you know, the ticket sales were what the ticket sales were, but the concessions could have doubled for that movie. Well, I if, could see if you had a, a, a re-release of something like The Shining and you okay. had a popcorn bucket that was like an elevator and you had the blood for the popcorn in that aspect, because then that ties into a famous scene in that movie. Okay, so you think it's it's horror movies, not specifically Irish movies? No, no, not I, There's not enough Irish movies that do well at the box office uh, okay. to 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 really be like, oh, for Banshees is a is an art house play. I, okay. You know what I mean? I think yeah. If but you that's where the, the that's where the fancy popcorn is. You know, you go to our beloved Angelica and and, and uh, formerly the Sunshine Theater when that exists. They they have all of the the types of popcorn butter and, and salts and stuff. So, you know, they're showing Belfast and then you got blood popcorn there. Pat, when's the last time you were at Angelica? How do you know they don't have blood in the popcorn already? That's true, but that's dripping in from the F train uh, subway grates. It's mm -hmm. a different kind of blood. Yeah. Um, you know, we need a dripping from official concession dispenser. So, okay. So there was that idea. The one other thing movie wise, I'll say from this trip abroad, which again, amazing time, Wembley stadium, multiple visits to Wembley stadium in the course of the week. Incredible. Taylor Swift, of course, saw her, one of our great movie stars had one of the biggest movie hits of the year last year. I saw her in person. Um, and, and she saw me, you know, our tickets are, we were close enough to the stage that I saw Taylor, but Taylor also saw Bio Boy. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was great for both of us. Do you think she was distracted at all by it seeing come, you? It did. That is how great of a performer she is. And that is, uh, I think, a testament to uh, her star power is that she, if she was distracted, it didn't show in the performance. Mm -hmm. It didn't show. Yeah. You know, I was just 20 feet away from her and she's singing blank space and, and just nailing it, even though a B.O. boy is, is so close. And she knew I was in town cause we've talked about it. She must've heard, you know, Aaron, uh, uh, filling in for those minutes that I wasn't on. So she knew, Oh, Pat might be at the show tonight and yet nailed the performance three hours. I didn't distract her at all. Now there are there were a lot of people, so maybe she wasn't a hundred percent sure it was you. Do you think there was any part of her that wanted to take her microphone and bring it up to your face mm. to cover part of your face to be like, yeah, that's the, that's him. That's, that's him. him. That's, that's the famous him. Pat shot. Yeah, I mean, and I again, didn't, I didn't know until I put the microphone up. Yeah. And and if you're not subscribed to the B.O. Boys YouTube channel, you didn't get that observation that Clayton made that the framing of me often has a large microphone covering under my nose through my chin. You mm -hmm. know, that is just the way I'm currently framed. Of course, when we are in studio for those special occasions, then you get the full bod shot and people love that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, it was a fantastic trip. Buses in in dublin and uh london they have double decker buses there and forget how many people that carries that's who cares the the movie advertisements on the side of these european buses are spectacular compared to the buses we have in the states that are only single level and they don't give you the height that really conveys the largeness of these theatrical releases so i think that is a huge thing that the U S should start looking into is double decker buses so that we get taller, larger, uh, movie advertisements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you're considering that, that you can well, see you're into they the double decker dub buses. Uh, there are double decker buses that exist. We have double decker buses, but they're not the norm. They're not, you know, those are like tours. I'm talking about your city public transportation. That is the standard in Europe are these double decker buses that are just like going up and down the avenue. You're thinking, of course, double decker buses that take you to Atlantic City with your friends every weekend. You know, that that's sure. But city buses the, in the States, they're not double decker. They're not big mm -hmm. enough to have these movie posters on them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, you you got to talk to the 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 city of New York to see if they want to just slap an extra, you know, level on every bus. Right. I I was I've been thinking about this. Just stack the buses because I get that starting from zero and de- redesigning all these buses as double decker. That's so this could take a long time. That we're at that point. It's you know Avengers uh, Phase Eight is coming out, so I think you just take existing buses, take the wheels off of some of them, and you just smush them on top of another bus. You put some kind of jam a ladder in there, Mm -hmm. and then you just you got huge huge sides of these buses to put movie posters. Well, because yeah, because the inside doesn't matter. It's what the inside, the outside that counts. Yeah, the inside does not matter. It doesn't have to be comfortable or safe or secure. It just no. has to be a conveyance for a large photo of, you know, uh, Channing Tatum yep. with Blink twice across the yes. bottom. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. And and we'd get to I, see him blink twice. I mean, you could. That's a big enough bus that you see him blink twice on the poster. Yes, on these on these current. You U.S. style buses, you're only seeing one blink yeah. on these blink twice posters. But if you do double deck or blink twice, and hey, might have helped the box office this weekend. If yeah, we had double decker buses with giant posters on the side for blink twice. M- maybe it gets a double digits, but you know, so single Pat- single digit buses does not help. This is uh, pretty unprecedented because I think this is the longest we've gone. Mm-hmm. In one of these episodes, which is the recap episode, yeah, weekend recap without plowing. Yeah, it's it's, and, and now we're just stretching it. Now we're just padding the record mm-hmm. here by talking about the record, mm-hmm. and that's great. And people love it, and they want this record to never be broken. Um, it, it might be. I mean, could there have been a pandemic episode? where it took us a while to get to a plow before we talked about, you know, Jurassic Park or uh, Star Wars and New Hope being number one at the box office summer 2020. We we may have gone that long. I think this is a task for wannabe O senior intern Christopher to go through every episode of the B.O. Boys and to see what is the longest amount of time it took before we got to a plow on a recap episode. I think that is a great... Uh, that is a great busy work task for him to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's do you want to get into it? Let's all right, here we go. Uh, first time I've I've gotten to say this in a while. It wasn't on one of my minutes on last week's episode. Clayton, could you give us a plow for the box office weekend of Friday, August 23rd? Number one, Deadpool and Wolverine made $18.3 million, down 39%. It lost 120 theaters. It's at $577.2 million in its fifth weekend of release. Number two, Alien Romulus made $16.3 million, down 61%. It added 30 theaters. It's at $72.8 million in its second weekend. Number three, It Ends With Us made $11.6 million, down 51%. It added 100 theaters. It's at $120.6 million in its third weekend. Now, here we go. Number four, A Newbie. Blink Twice made $7.3 million in its first weekend. Number five, the spinoff of The War Room, The Forge, made $6.6 million in its first weekend. Number six, Twisters made $6.1 million, down 39%. It lost 277 theaters. It's at $248.5 million in its sixth weekend of release. Number seven, Coraline, a fathom event, made $5 million, down 49%. It lost 105 theaters. It's cumulatively at 106 point nine million dollars in its 812th weekend and all the way down at number eight duck row 4.6 million dollars 
in its first weekend of release. Pat, this thing cried macho. As I said, cry macho, $4.4 million. The Crow, $4.6 million. I nailed this. Yeah. This you, was you, a cry macho situation. Yes. You do not have to eat any crow in regards nope. to 2024 is the crow. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you nailed it. Now, I, it was interesting. You were reading the top 10. You were plowing through the domestic box office. And I guess that's a way to go. I mean, I would be more interested in going forward. We just switched to doing international box office because that I think that's what everyone wants to hear. Because actually, number one at the international box office this weekend was Alien Romulus was number one. And then number two at the international box office was It Ends With Us, Be Deadpool and Wolverine. What I, the fuck are you doing? I, I, what the fuck know, are you I, doing? I just feel like this is a way to go with this show going forward. Is let's go international instead. Are we gonna have to kidnap you, throw you in a bag, and and hit you yeah. with a uh, with a bag uh, a, a pillowcase full of hamburgers again? Showing the take the you British to a baseball game, on. take you to a baseball game, shove apple pie uh, in your mouth hole, get you back. Domestic the the international boy these yeah of course these freaks like alien, Romulus number one, number one yeah of course they million. like the face huggers and the and the alien sperm these creeps over in England over uh, over in Europe of course they love that 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 trash and, over and number here, two was it ends with us internationally great. great I mean that that you're just derailing this this show completely. Mm -hmm. Or par perhaps putting it on a uh, a faster rail, an international rail that people are going to want to jump on board. So you really want to you really want us to uh, switch our focus to a a box office right. that thoroughly rejected Twisters, a movie you loved with two emerging stars. Two emerging stars were in that movie, and you want to just flip-flop. You don't want to talk about the 248. You want to talk about the 60 not, or whatever it made. It's not at 100 million outside the U.S. as of now. That's where Twisters is at, and I think that's what, how we should have framed the conversation all along. So you want to talk about the $98 million that's made at the international box office. A fun summer blockbuster the way they used to be made that's thoroughly rejected by the creeps over across the pond. That's that's what you want to focus on. I mean, I think we could talk about that Alien Romulus is at 73.3 million in China alone. Is that not is that not what where we want to go right talking now? Talking about China? Uh, talking what is about going China? Like we're not even talking about you're now going so far off the map. Well, international of what is international. we care about. I, all I'm saying is email us the bo boys podcast at gmail.com and let us know which direction you want us to take the show. Are we domestic box office as we've been up until now when it's been great and successful, or do we go to a new level by focusing on international box this guy office? Here, you're, you're start, I mean, it's bad enough you're talking about you know, uh, England, but you're talking FCB right now. Okay. We don't uh, talk about FCB. We don't say FCB. We don't talk uh, about FCB. Okay. Uh, so we're all, not I'm say all I'm saying is email us the BO boys podcast at gmail.com next weekend. Reagan movie 2024 comes out. And would you prefer that we talk about it in terms of what it does? Domestically, or do you want to hear what Reagan movie 2024 does? in a, all international markets. You know, that wow. I think that's that's the big question as we talk about next weekend the results for Reagan. You know, where where do where do people want to hear the perspective on Ronald Reagan from and the and the Reagan movie 2024. Wow. So, I mean, I'm go. I'm gobsmacked right now. Do do you want to talk about The Crow? Let, or do you want to talk okay. about my penguin friend? let's let's get into the crow let's talk domestic you know no radical shifts in show policy 
yet. I know you're gobsmacked. Your mouth is left agape. I, I totally get it. You know, even behind the sunglasses, I could see your eyes rolling to the back of your head. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's. I'm stay in panic. The, I'm in full panic mode. Yeah, it's it's fight or flight time for Clayton, and I understand that. So let's take it down. We'll, we'll we'll get back to a comfortable place for you, which is domestic box office. So the crow, what a disaster! Here's mm-hmm. here's my question to you, Clayton. Why? Why, why, why did they do this? Why did Lionsgate, you know, I don't think they funded the production of it. It, uh, I'm seeing, it seems like they bought the movie to distribute for about 10 or $15 million. But why in 2024 does the Crow remake with Bill Skarsgård exist? I mean, I think that question is very easy to answer is that they had the IP and it was lying around. I think there's mm-hmm. no IP that can't be brushed off, dusted off mm-hmm. and thrown into theaters in an attempt to really see, hey, is there a generation that loves this movie and will go and see a reboot? I mean, right. Lionsgate, there's a Lionsgate release. Um, so, you know, they have another stinker after Borderlands. Oof. Bad movie that, wow. Really, really disappeared. Although th- they don't have as much at stake here because they just bought it. You know, it's right. not, it's not necessarily like they didn't really do much, uh, in the way of spend on this. looks like they probably spent, you know, 25 all in with mm-hmm, PNA mm-hmm. and acquiring it. So it was worth a shot here. Yeah. I don't think that there's a reason I, I, this is not the most egregious sort of reboot that we've ever seen. I, I don't think it was a dumb idea to make another crow movie. I just think that this movie just didn't look like a movie people wanted to see. And that was the problem. It was not the fact that you're making another Crow movie. It's the fact that the way this Crow movie was made. Yeah. I mean, the Crow, I, I get that. And, and of course, you're going to try again with, with an IP. But the Crow is such a 90s IP mm-hmm. that I, I don't know if it could translate. You know, and of course, yes, there's always going to be moody young people who are in their feelings and feel isolated and all that. That that goes through time but the crow is such 90s iconography that i don't think is the same now i mean honestly the crow would have to tweet right now the crow would have to make tiktoks these days i I don't think you could just lift the crow from 1993 and put him in in 2024 and have young people care the same way it's 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 such a 90s type of character. I mean, do, do you think that they needed to make radical changes to the crow for this to have worked now? Or do you think there's a way where they just pluck this 1990s crow and put him in a movie now and it could have worked? Well, we don't know if he does if he tweets or not in this film, because I haven't seen it. Me and uh, our, our, our our great guest host, Aaron, yep. are going to see this on Thursday. Yeah, uh, she agreed to paint her face as I will be painting my face. So that oh, was an wow. ironclad agreement. So if if anybody sees us out and and one of our faces are painted and the other person's face is not painted, then that would be terribly unfair. And I believe as a fan of our show, you should call that person out on it. Yes. So just saying that. Uh, but here's the thing. You have the option of updating this to make him, you know, an influencer, mm-hmm. you know, him and his his girlfriend are only fan on, on only fans mm-hmm. and an obsessed fan kills her or whatever you want to do there. You could uh, definitely yep. do something like that. And that's honestly could be the uh, that could be what's in this movie. I don't know. I don't but, know. I don't think it is. But uh, yes, that that already sounds so much better and more current. Yeah. The other direction is that you just make it a 90s movie. You just put mm-hmm. the crow where he belongs in the 90s. You get a auteur, somebody who was a really big fan of the crow, and you give them free reign to be like, listen, here is 
a another crow movie in the era where people love the crow the 90s mm-hmm. you pack it out with a great soundtrack because of course the crow best soundtrack ever yeah the 1994 version is the best soundtrack ever motion picture soundtrack and yep. so then you just jump on that again you just use a bunch of 90s songs or you get current artists covering famous 90s songs and you put that in the movie mm-hmm. right i mean i think that's the sort of thing soundtracks don't sell but spotify playlists do yes and yes. you sell this movie as you like that playlist go see the moving pictures that go along with this playlist mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right i mean that's a way to that's a way to do this this movie where listen it's not going to make 100 million dollars but you could make a movie low budget crow in the 90s covers of 90s songs you could get that to 40 50 60 maybe I, that's that's the thing though i mean do do people even want covers of stone temple pilot songs right now you know is that is is that gonna sell yeah if it's done by the right people i mean look at i and this was not a huge hit by any means but i saw the tv glow has Mm -hmm. a, a very 90s aesthetic obviously that's a director that has a a point of view and is an auteur if you got somebody like that to do a crow movie you know like as yeah. a step up like here's the step up this is the ip that 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 is yeah right off the bat obviously that couldn't happen because of when these movies were made and when that director popped coming off of this but that that off the bat feels like a perfect pluck someone from a big indie movie and then give them an IP that fits. Mm-hmm. Is I mean, the, I saw the TV Rocka, Glow director uh, getting the crow. That that yeah, that's a great idea. That, what would Rocka Rocka do with the crow? Yeah, and that's the problem is that you you would need to have one of these uh, directors or you know um, single directors, double directors, you know whatever. You know, the Daniels, if they were like, ah, oh, we love the crow. It's like, eh, right. make a fucking crow movie, you maniacs. Right. You know, right, and right. like, then that's something. But right. the IP by itself is not going to sell this film. Because who is the director of, okay, so Rupert Sanders directed this crow. Uh, and that sounds like a familiar name. Oh, but, okay, so the director of this crow 2024 is just a journeyman hack it seems Mm -hmm. because rupert sanders has directed snow white and the huntsman which was a big hit but a not a movie anyone associates with a directorial style ghost in the shell which was a bomb Mm. um a movie called Rug and Rub and Tug with Scarlett Johansson that didn't happen. Okay, that was uh, that. Oh, yeah, we know yeah. about that situation. And then, and then this Crow movie. Um, and then it looks like some TV. I mean, yeah. So they did not get a director that would bring anything exciting to this franchise. They got the person who directed Snow White and the Huntsman, mm-hmm. which is wait, is Snow White and the Huntsman the one that was a hit? Yeah, that was. That was a hit. Winter's War was the not a hit. Yes, yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman is the one with Kristen Stewart. So has a hit, but a hit that nobody cares about. And is a hit because of Kristen Stewart at that time. Yeah. So, yes, if they would have had a very cool director that brings something unique to this, then maybe that's an IP worth dusting off. I still think you modernize it. And instead of you know, the Jesus and Mary chain, it's Lana Del Rey and it's Taylor Swift and it's the kind of angsty songs that are angsty in 2024, not in 1994. Yeah, you got one of those right. I got got one one of those those. right? You got got one of those right. You got one of those artists right. Okay, great. I mean, Uh, a lot of of Del Rey song written specifically for a Crow movie. Yeah. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be huge. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, so, 
Lana. Is it not Lana Del Rey? Am I saying someone? Uh, no, what is no. It? I I think a Lana Del, Del Rey song on a Crow soundtrack would be great. A Taylor Swift song on a Crow soundtrack would be insane. Right. Um. So yeah. I. What about the star of this movie, Bill Skarsgård? What about? I him? mean, say something about him that you know about him. What do you know about this guy? He's what buff. was the movie? What was the movie that we had that he had just a few months ago that was a giant bomb? Boy Kill Kill World or whatever. Yes, Boy Kills World, where they brought Ugh. John Benjamin in to do a a full redo of the voiceover of the movie, mm-hmm. and they thought that was going to save it. Of course, we love John Benjamin. He's got a van, can of vegetables. But when you get to a point where the saving uh, move for your movie is to bring John Benjamin in to redo all the voiceover. That is damning. And that is the position Bill Skarsgård was in with his last big movie. I mean, is this guy just, is he simply a clown? Is he just a clown? Yeah, he's just a clown. Absolutely, he's just a clown. I mean, name anything else other than Barbarian that has this gentleman has made a significant impact in other than being a clown. He's a clown. And listen, that I mean, that was a. I mean, at least the first one, huge yeah. hit. So yeah. people I love mean, so, that clown. Yeah, yeah, and the second one's a big hit. Obviously, a drop off, but it's still a a hit. But that that it doesn't seem like that movie has translated into him being someone that anyone knows mm-hmm. or cares about. Mm-mm. They liked whoever it was that played that clown. Mm-hmm. But no one has ever investigated further who was the actor who played that clown in the yeah. movies. It's not I mean, like with Jim Curry, where people looked into it. They said, the original It TV movie, who played the clown? Oh, it's Tim Curry. We like him. We'll follow him. That is not happened with Bill Skarsgård in his It movies. They did not look into it. And Pennywise is no joker. Pennywise is no joker. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to end up with, uh, you know, uh, this, this is, I mean, uh, when you're talking clowns, mm-hmm. we're talking Joker. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this guy is, was a clown that did, you know, he had one big movie, one movie that, yeah, did well, you know, respectively, but sort of underperformed in the expectations of the first one. Right. But he's not the clown that everybody wants. No, he is no. yet to play the clown that everybody wants to play. He was a secondary clown. And I don't think Bill Skarsgård could ever play Joker because I think you get to play one clown. I mean, I don't think Jack is going to play Pennywise someday. No, no. Um, I mean, if that's his last performance, then we'll all have to go out and see it. Oh, I mean, that would that would be fantastic. They reboot it and they bring Jack in as Pennywise. And that's or the last Jack is just him. like, I wrote it three and i want to star in it and then right. you gotta let him it'd be his last performance him. he's like i'm yeah. dying yeah I'm dying that, and this is the last thing i want to do th- this is what we missed last year during the sag strike sag was my jack is when you were not allowed to do your jack you were not allowed to do your your dead on celebrity impressions i mean mm-hmm. that 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 was a huge hole in the show that i'm glad is is now filled. Wait till they get a load of my it three. Yeah. Yeah, that that's great. That's great. I love I love that idea for the movie and I I love this impression even more. So, Bill Skarsgård as the crow, I get the idea of a couple of years ago when you're casting this part, you're like, "Okay, the clown from it, now he gets to play the crow who's a clownish character." More makeup. Yeah, just put more white makeup. makeup on this this very already very white gentleman yeah i mean of course who i'm about to say is a much bigger star and it's a totally different budget situation but if you're going for angsty sad boy who people actually care about chalamet chalamet if if chalamet Chalamet is the crow game changer hundred million dollar movie yes yes a hundred percent that that's your that is your movie star sad boy Mm-hmm. You know, Skarsgård is your, I wouldn't even say indie darling sad boy. I mean, he's your no box office sad boy. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, Chalamet on that roof, the rain is coming down and he is perched 
on the roof in his white makeup face that's that opens to 35 million and guess who his girlfriend who uh has an untimely passing in the movie who is it jenna Jenna. ortega jenna ortega yeah if you get a if if the if the if the girlfriend in this movie is jenna ortega and the crow Uh is timothy chalamet this movie's baffa bobo undeniable Both of them were like, we love the crow. We used to have crow backpacks that we bought from Hot Topic. Like that would, you know, that's one of those things that uh, that's a big movie. Yes. Those are two people who could legitimately go on the chat shows and say that their personas were formed because of seeing the crow and it would all click. We'd all believe it. But that's the problem is that that isn't the case. Right. I mean, that's not the case. We haven't found we didn't have a star that wanted to do this and loved it. We didn't have a director that this, you know, a a, a fun auteur director that was like the crow means a lot to me. So, I mean, all of this to say the hardcore fans of the crow are the same hardcore fans that went to see um, Clint Eastwood Mm -hmm. and a a, a chicken. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So like that's the amount of people that yep. love the crow still in 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 one tw- in the year God's year of 2024. Yep. 30 years from 30 the years. original one. Yep. You've got the same amount of people that would want to see a cockfighting movie with Clint Eastwood, which I'm assuming that's what that movie was. I don't know. He had a rooster in it. Right. I, I was. Well, I was going to ask you. uh so you still, I, I also have never seen Cry Macho mm-hmm. it, and it's become such a big term, you know, trademark B.O. boys, rights reserved to B.O. boys, crying macho. Do we need to see Cry Macho at some point? Does that yeah. need to be? Okay. Well, I think we have to do, you know, we're doing the live shows and we, we have to focus on those. Yes, but I do think there is a world next year where we go go on a tour where mm-hmm. we just watch Cry Macho in different cities with our fans. Like, yes, a little bit less work for us. We do uh, a, a, a showing of Cry Macho. We have a Q and A afterwards. Yeah, we get the hen. Yeah, we or an, a, a, hen an approximate, uh, you know, like a hen that looks approximately like the hen. Yeah, well, we got a local hen in every city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got yeah. a local hen in every city. Yeah, we advertise after the movie. It's a hen party. Hosted no, by it's the boys. I'm looking on the Wikipedia cockfights with her, with his rooster Macho. So I was right. Yeah, got cockfighting. Yeah, that, so that's that's the 2025 tour. Is Bo Boys screen cry Macho in every city in the country with a local hen post movie hen party. Yeah, that's that's going to be huge, um, and uh, and and maybe we we might have to also then twenty twenty six might have to be uh, the Charlie's Angels, the mm-hmm. Kristen Stewart version because the fly course, with the fly with the Angels tour. Yeah, fly with the Angels tour. So yeah, we've got three years of tours mapped out already. But you know, get your tickets mm-hmm. now, of course, for Los Angeles October eighth, New York October twenty second, Boston with Kirk Minahan November sixteenth. So. The Crow is a disaster. It's luckily, I guess, Lionsgate's not as on the line, but it's still a it's a bad it's a bad time for Lionsgate right now. And there are always a studio that's on the precipice of of you know being sold or being gutted or whatever. They're they're in a weird spot as this mini major, and they are pretty much right now exist to put out John Wick spinoff movies. And Saw movies, mm-hmm. you know, Borderlands, they hoped would become a franchise. I'm sure they hope that distributing The Crow would turn into a franchise. I mean, the other thing about The Crow is it's never had a successful follow up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's had three sequels. One of them was a giant bomb. Just like two years later, two of them were straight to video movies in the late 90s. You know, that I, I, I'm sure there's a million people at me and say oh the comic book or whatever this ancillary products are that people love but movie wise it's a one movie franchise and that's it 
And that movie wasn't even that huge of a hit, to be honest. I mean, it had it, it had a cultural impact more for face painting for Halloween than it did really at the box office. But when you look at this, because, you know, we were talking about who could have starred in this movie now. This movie went through so many iterations. Uh, me oh. and Aaron talked about this last time. We talked about Bradley Cooper, Mark War, yeah. Mark Warburg. <laughs> Fuck it, it's a raw feed. Mark Wahlberg, yeah. Channing Tatum, even Ryan Gosling, Luke Evans, and even Bill Skarsgård's brother Alexander Skarsgård was circling this role at some point. The last version mm -hmm. before this one had Jason Momoa. That that's a wild one because the crow was supposed to be uh relatable. Yes. And and yeah. when you're talking Jason Momoa or even Bill's older brother Alex Garsgard, these are, you know, big Hulk and monstrosities that I can't imagine uh being emo and and tiny and you know, again, it's Chalamet. The crow should have been Chalamet. Mm -hmm. Um Mark Wahlberg, I, I would have loved to see of all versions and you guys talked about it the mark Wahlberg version of the crow would have been one of the most fascinating things ever committed to film just imagine him trying to be emo at all yeah yeah he he would immediately the first act of the movie he would wash the makeup off and be like well, what is this oh it's off my face come on i mean and I, listen i know he's an actor but yeah. when, but in these sort of roles, he plays Mark Wahlberg. So right. he is the gentleman who famously said that he wishes he was on one of the planes during 9-11 because yeah. it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So a guy who says, put me on one of the 9-11 planes and it won't happen is not going to be a guy crying on a roof in the rain. It's just right. not. You can't. It's not. Those people, he wouldn't be able to get into that character's head because he's like, right. Wait, what? I'm crying about this. I'm painting my face. Right. Like, you know, I just don't think that he has what it takes to uh, b to be as emotionally, uh, you know, in his feels, as they say, no. as a Eric Draven or whatever the guy's name is. Eric Draven. Yeah. Is that his name? Well, it, in the the whole inciting incident of the crow story is that yeah the the guy and his girlfriend get killed by a gang. I mean, right away, that's the first change Mark Wahlberg makes to the Crow script. Is, I kill them. No, I kill them. Is they don't kill and they don't kill my girlfriend. They don't, they don't kill my girlfriend. They don't kill I my kill them. Girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then it's like, and then you know, and then that changed. But then the rest we could keep the same. Yeah, and then we you know, go to church. Then we go to church. Yeah, me and my girlfriend go to church, and I go and I apologize to God for killing these these, uh, uh, and I do ten Hail Marys, and it's good. And that that's right. my Crow. So. You either take it or leave it is what Mark would say. And then he would walk out with his entourage. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, what was his turtle was horse. Who was his, 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 his the turtle, real life turtle was like donkey like donkey. Yes. If only the, the Mark Wahlberg version of the crow had been made before donkey's premature death. And we could have had donkey cameo in the Mark Wahlberg crow that would have been, that would have been huge. And again, this would have been, I think the most fascinating film ever made mm -hmm. is Mark Wahlberg and donkey starring in uh, a version of the crow where the crow kills the gang 10 minutes into the movie. Yeah. 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 I mean, listen, so we got to talk though, cause we mentioned Channing Tatum. We got to talk blink twice. Yeah. Channing Tatum, who we were touting as back, fully I back. I know. Right? I know. I he know. had Lost City. He had Dog. He had Dog. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a 2021 that this, or is it 2022? 2022 that I he mean, had. Bringing theaters back. Yeah. This is a star that brought people back to the theaters, brought theaters back. To yep. viable entertainment centers, and now he's got the last dance. That, yeah. of course, they didn't promote enough. We we will go. We're not going to blame Channing Tatum for that. Yeah, and we won't. And we talked about that when it came out. But it is. It's 
part of this run. You know, that that's yeah. the problem is that from then on, other than the Gambit cameo, it's been a rough run the last two years. Fly me to the ru- to the m- moon. Yeah. Egregious. Egregious decision to be yeah. in that movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to let a TV talent try to direct you in a major motion picture Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i know aaron last episode made a a a great point that they we should be rooting for tv talents to aspire to be movie makers but the problem Mm -hmm. is when you come at us with this 60s moon landing horse shit yeah yeah you don't deserve to direct a movie that goes to theaters. You don't mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if you don't understand the fact that down with love exists and bombed and you yep. try to do it again, then you didn't do your homework, go back to the drawing board, come back with an idea that's viable. Yeah. Right. So that's on. I mean, I think that's on Channing, right? That one yes. is definitely on Channing. The thing with blink twice, Zoe Kravitz directing, mm-hmm. they are entangled. You know, mm-hmm. they're not married, but happy wife, happy, happy life. Right. So yep, yep. I've heard great things. Aaron, in fact, loved this movie. I, I've great. got the quote. I've got the quote right here. I'm looking at my phone. Quote, her. you know, because I, I she's not just someone who fills in for me when I can't be on every minute of a show. She's also a friend. And I have a text from Aaron. And she said, uh, greetings from Pussy Island which of course yes. was the original working title, maybe should have been the title of this movie when it was released. Greetings from Pussy Island. I just blinked twice and I could have totally blinked two or three more times. What a beautiful movie. And then says, I'm really impressed by Zoe Kravitz. Genuinely excited for her next movie. I think I would watch anything she directs. Yeah. So there you go. There is your moment of Aaron on this episode. She loved Blink Twice. Would have wanted to blink several times more. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not that this is not a good movie. It seems like it's well reviewed. Um it's just a hard sell, but the problem is here sell. is that stars are part of the selling of right. hard sells. Right. And if Channing Tatum's put them on mm-hmm. these posters, mm-hmm. not on the double decker buses in America, unless mm-hmm. you had something to say about it. Those should have sold tickets. Those should have sold at least $10 million worth of tickets, yes. not $7 million worth of tickets. That's the problem. Are we getting to the point now where, oh, that guy, I don't really like that guy in much. Oh, no. Like, I, I, he I was think- good, like, back in, I mean, I guess I liked him in those dance movies. Wait, they made a third one? Like, that is where he's headed. Uh, it, it's, I think with both of the movies this summer, I mean, especially this, this movie, the thing about Channing Tatum is he's the lovable oaf. Mm. And, and that is how people want to see him. He's the lovable oaf in, uh, in the, the, the 21 Lost jump Eddie. street movies. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's it's one. He was the lovable oaf and dog. He's the lovable oaf in the lost city. He's the lovable oaf in the magic Mike movies that actually yeah. had real promotion. That is people want to love him. They want him to be nice. They want him to be modern. I think, you know, the problem with, uh, uh, fly me to the moon is a period piece that everyone hates that period. Also, he was faking the moon landing. People don't want Channing Tatum to fake the moon landing. They what is want he doing him... a, a flat earth movie next. Exactly. They want Channing Tatum to be, if he's going to be involved with NASA, they want him to be an astronaut now, not mm-hmm. a fake astronaut 60 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so He's not doing the movies that fit what people want of him. You know, he's mm-hmm. he just isn't a versatile movie star where there's some movie stars who could everyone's got their movie star persona, but a Bradley Cooper 
gets more leeway with his types of roles. He could be the romantic good guy. He could be the scoundrel. You know, he could be the guy impersonating Louis C.K. in American Hustle. He could be all kinds of movie stars. Mm -hmm. But Channing Tatum, I think, is lovable, good-natured oaf that is in modern times, and he just hasn't been picking those roles since Dog. Yeah, they don't want him as a predator. They don't want, I mean, that's the big problem with this movie is his star power doesn't help because his star power is, I mean, my mom is on the the old end of his star power, but I do think that is his star power is women who just want to go to a movie to like him. And this movie, Blink Twice, is not really going to give you that from Channing Tatum. He's, he's a, 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 Sex predator tech guy. Yeah, your your mom would want him to be the guy who comes in and saves the ladies from Pussy Island. Yes, yes. she would be 100%. like, I wish that he was the hero yes. in this movie and that he wasn't the guy who owns Pussy Island. Yes, she would want it to be. He's a detective and the movie is called Attack on Pussy Island. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like he's yeah. leading, he's leading an invasion to save everyone from Pussy Island. That's yeah. the version of this movie where Channing Tatum is a draw. And you yeah. get, listen, you get as an actor, aside from happy wife, happy life, why he'd want, everyone wants to play a villain, you know, and Channing Tatum is a cameo guy. He, he loves doing these cameos. He did Gambit in the Deadpool movie. He was in Hateful Eight. You know, he was in uh, This is the End, right? He had a famous cameo where where he's in a, in a, in a leather he a mask. Gimp. He was a gimp. You know, like, you get it. He wants to play around. But this wasn't a cameo. This was trying to use him as the draw. And he can't be the draw when he's playing the villain. Mm-hmm. So are we now in crisis mode uh, for... Channing because he was felt like the guy who came out of the pandemic looking the best of yep. that sort of era of, yep. of movie star. I mean, obviously now, you know, Gosling was a guy who was primed after Barbie, mm-hmm. you know, uh fall guy got sort of, uh, we, we'll talk, we talked so much about fall guy, but again, didn't do as horribly as, as everybody's saying, it did also it, yeah. didn't really open the summer because summer really didn't start until June. So yeah. Gosling question mark still, I mean, in a yeah. better position than he was pre Barbie, but I think right now Channing was a guy that we thought we could rely on and he's looking pretty, pretty shaky. Yeah. I mean, I think Channing has came out of the gate. Like you said, post COVID just two hits in a row, and looked great. And I think Glenn Powell has really, you know, uh, uh, Bill Simmons term is market corrected uh, Channing Tatum right now. Because Glenn Powell is in that same space, maybe not so much oaf as Channing no. Tatum, but romantic hero and every man and, and funny, you know, like like not not 80s, 90s action movie star, but sort of, the type of star who could do the rom-coms and do the romantic adventures. And I think Glenn Powell has now leapfrogged Channing Tatum in that spot. Well, does Glenn Powell open Pussy Island? Because that, that I think also would be at this point in his career, a bad thing to do because everybody's sort of, uh, he's a rascal, but he's not a predator. And I think that smile could be twisted into a devious smile and he doesn't want to do that yet. Right. Yeah. But like, yeah. say right now, this guy had twisters and pussy Island coming out. Does pussy Island with Glenn Powell off of twisters and off of Hitman mm-hmm. is this movie open? I think it uh, for sure opens bigger and I, it still wouldn't have been the right movie. I think overall, it this wouldn't have been a huge hit, but I think this movie opening today with Glenn Powell opens to double digits. Mm-hmm. 
because he is just hotter and someone that is this summer. I'm not saying it's going to be this way in two years, but right now he is definitely more of a draw than Channing Tatum. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I but but it wouldn't have been the right move for him. No, it wouldn't have been no. the right move for him. Um, and, and and I could again, I could see how if Channing Tatum thought that coming off of Fly Me to the Moon and that was going to be his rom com hit, and then Pussy Island was going to be his. Oh, I get to play a villain in this small movie. Then that's fine. But it's the problem of coming off of that huge. Uh, failure mm-hmm. to immediately have Pussy Island as your next movie. It that that's a rough back to back. Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm gonna just we'll move on to the Forge briefly because I don't really think that we need to talk much about it, even though it did decently for a movie that only opened in 1800 theaters. I yeah. just want to see what Channing has coming up. Now, this mm-hmm. th- might not necessarily be gospel because it's imdb which we know is trash Mm -hmm. so let's see what this gentleman has in the works Uh, hypothetically and as you do that i google channing tatum for the same purpose see what he has coming out the big stories about channing tatum today are this revelation he made that he once bought new shirts for an entire year to avoid doing laundry that year and That's there's a five oaf. different stories. That's a lovable oaf. That's that a is... goddamn lovable oaf. I mean, that should be that should be his next movie. Mm-hmm. Is that story? You know, we're this is the the summer of of bringing back Josh Hartnett, and famously one of there Josh Hartnett's classics, which you rewatched recently, really took to heart. Yep. Is Forty Days, Forty Nights. Yeah, this is that type of story. That endurance story that people want from their beautiful, lovable oaks is they want to see them endure something ridiculous. Channing Tatum buying new shirts every day so he doesn't have to do laundry. That's the that's the movie. Pat, here's the here's the movie. Here's the name here's of the movie. the movie. Okay. 365 shirts. Yep. That's the name of the movie. That's the name and of the movie. And all of his friends are like. There's no way you're going to buy a shirt every day. There's no way. Yeah. You're going to you're going to throw that shirt away. You're going to throw that right. shirt away and get a new shirt. He does right. it. 365 days. But then he meets a girl. And does he keep one of the shirts that the girl likes? Yes. Like or, I mean, or, or that she gives him. She gives that him she a shirt. Gives him a shirt she and he's got to launder it. And he's he's got to launder it. And here's the deal. He doesn't Channing Tatum doesn't throw the shirts out. He gives them to people who need a shirt. You know, so an alternate title for this movie could be Shirt Off My Back. Something like that. You know, because he's lovable, but he's not doing laundry. I love and that. And then note. finally, love when that. a girl shirt gives him back. a shirt, Shirt Off My Back, and he launders the shirt in the third act. You know, mm. she's going to the airport. She's about to move to Switzerland or wherever. And then he shows up at the airport with in a the shirt. In the shirt and a full bag of clean laundry that he did. Yeah, it's downy fresh. He, yeah, it's it yeah. smells like that's. I love that because he dumps it on the conveyor belt at security. So all yeah. these shirts are just going through, and the TSA agents who we've we've already shown they're evil. You know they got some going on. When they see these shirts coming at them, they just can't believe this that someone has laundered all these shirts and just dumped them on the conveyor at security. Well, because he's like, you know, like every man, not necessarily ready for true love. So he, you know, when she asked, like, what happened to that shirt I gave you? He's like, I gave it away. I gave away shirts. That's what I did. Right. But then yeah, we yeah. find out that he did keep it yeah. and he launders it along with yeah. other shirts. And like you said, runs to the airport with a bag of laundry, throws yeah. it on the conveyor. I mean, this is a movie. That plays to all of Channing Tatum's strengths. Yes. And yet he chose to do fake moon landing movie, Pussy Island. Yeah. Yeah. It's how do you, as someone in Channing Tatum's camp, hear him tell this story about how he bought a new shirt every day to avoid doing laundry and not say that is the move Channing. That's the movie. That's mm-hmm. the movie. Is Robert Town alive? 
we got to get him to write this script. Mm -hmm. You know, this is Spielberg's next movie. This, This is, this is the movie. That's the idea. And maybe he hasn't told the story until now. You know, maybe that's it that that no one has heard this story. Mm-hmm. But now that he has told it, that is Channing Tatum's next movie. Yeah. Yep. Shirt off my back for three hundred sixty-five shirts. Exactly. Um, well, it, in foreign markets, it'd be called three hundred sixty-five shirts. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so a little simple. bone throw to you. Yeah. And, and think of think of all of the press that you could do where he is where he has all these shirts he's going to wear in this movie Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's wearing a different one of these shirts on every stop of the press tour yeah every premiere a different shirt from the movie every interview a different shirt from the movie at the press junket he's changing shirts all day in the hotel yeah and 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 you know we talk tie-ins we talk tie-ins you love to talk about the tie-ins and the marketing and all that stuff you love it i don't love it as much but uh uniglo the 365 Mm -hmm. channing tatum shirt collection yeah i mean you're selling 365 different shirts all all sanctioned by channing tatum i mean how is this not something that a company would leap at yes And, and and you're doing different shirts for different partners that hit different markets. So you, he's buying some shirts from target, you know, he's buying some shirts from Hugo, Bo- Hugo boss, whatever he he's buying shirts for, for that, that reach different sensibilities. Wait, and so I you're think- saying Pat, that no company is going to get exclusive rights to all three sixty five of the shirts. You're thinking breaking Splitting these up, up into, yeah chunks of shirts so yeah. you go to abercrombie and fitch yeah and you get shirts yes. like 16 through 27 yes yes that's and then the you play. have to hop to another store like the gap yep to get 28 through 36 yep and you get you get wow. fubu in on it you know you get all these different clothing partners in on this and they each get a batch of shirts from 365 shirts aka shut off my back and you're hitting all these markets all these moviegoers uh, there's there's standees of channing tatum in a shirt in in every kind of clothing store mm-hmm. that that is the movie that is the movie yeah i mean i could see the tiktok challenge now the shut off your back challenge yes Yes, yes, you're you're passing, you know how they do the videos where you do something in the TikTok and then you move and then the other TikTok person take it's you're handing a shirt to the next TikToker mm-hmm. from and one side like, of yeah. the frame to the other. Yep. Yeah. You take the shirt off your back, pass it over, someone's I'm giving shirt my off. shirt to Selena Gomez. A- a- yes, the celebrities would do it too. Yes. And then Selena yes. Gomez has the shirt, and then it's like Selena's like, "I'm giving my shirt to uh, who's like an Olympian? I don't know, uh, Simone, Simone Biles. Biles. There yeah, we go. Simone the, Biles the Olympian, the one Olympian, yes. Simone Biles. Yes, yes, yes. I'm giving yes. it to to Radar. Who's the dancer that everybody hates? Ra- the Australian yes. dancer, Ra- Ra- Radar. Yeah, is it Radar? I, I, yes, I'm giving it to Gary Berghoff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She, that, Radar's that... got to give it to Radar. He's dead though, right? Gary Berghoff. Oh, from uh, from Mash. Yeah. Um, I think that then you just you, Radar the the Australian break dancer gives it to a, a living a living family member of of, of Radar from Mash. Yeah. No, he's still alive. So Radar, the dancer, could give Radar Gary Berghoff the uh, uh, the shirt off their back. Oh wow, wow! And, and then do you throw him a cameo in the movie because no. he did the TikTok he's not now. camera ready. He's not camera ready. I mean, it's going to be at the lowest. I mean, his TikTok video has to be at the lowest DP possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be shrouded in darkness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah you just gotta you just gotta off. trust you just gotta trust that it's the real gary Berghoff and not a fake gary Berghoff. yes 
I mean, I don't think he watches TikToks, but Kirk Minahan would be the one. He would get that. He mm-hmm. would see Radar from MASH on a TikTok, and and he that that would pop him huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he would love it. So there you go. It's it's rough times for Channing Tatum coming off of this movie, but there is a bright future if his people just listen to the Bo Boys and take this anecdote and make this his next movie. Mm-hmm. That that would be whatever he's in production on now. Halt production. Pull a Joaquin Phoenix. Walk off the set before the movie starts filming, and just devote all your time to. 365 shirts. So we've fixed Channing Tatum's career, whether or not he wants to take our advice. I mean, everybody listens. He might not be listening to this episode, but his assistant and his people are definitely listening and give him a summation in an email. Does he read it every week? Maybe, maybe not. He's a busy man, but this will get to him for this sure. will get to him. I, I think that the, here's my prediction. The path is my prediction is Lenny Kravitz is a listener mm-hmm. and Lenny Kravitz gets it to Channing Tatum at the next family meal. Yeah. You got to listen on. He listens on tour because there's a lot of uh, downtime. Yeah. And if you're off the smoke, you're off the horse, you know, you, you, you don't, you don't drink a bottle of wine every night anymore. You mm-hmm. got to fill that time with something and it's podcasts and it's our podcast. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what happens is Channing Tatum over dinner says, Hey, there's these guys. They got an idea. Mm-hmm. So now, Pat, uh, the forge. I mean, can we talk to forge really quickly? Yeah. I, I, I don't know much about this. The forge, you know, yeah. I listened to you guys preview it. I mean, this seems like it, 6.6 is this higher than what the expectations were for this movie i know these guys no. did the war room and that was a big hit years ago but th- this is in the range the 6.6 yeah yeah this board? is in the okay. range of what they expected absolutely yeah this is okay. in the range it's in the range yeah um uh, what, I, it quickly because i we were going long you know fixing a major hollywood star's career uh, takes time. So we took up some time here doing that. Mm-hmm. You didn't get a chance to talk Romulus. This movie dropped 61%. Erin said she thought this was going to be the number one movie. I knew differently. I knew that Alien Romulus could not hold off Deadpool and Wolverine. Mm-hmm. 61% drop. It did open at a good uh, number. Mm-hmm. 40. 40 something. Yeah. Yep. 61 is a horror movie drop. Yeah, it's, so it, this makes it's sense for this movie to drop this much because listen, mm-hmm. it didn't open to 28 and drop 61. Mm-hmm. It's already at 72. This yeah. movie is most likely going to go over 100. Yes, that's uh, a win. Yeah, it should. Yeah, that's a win for mm-hmm. a movie that was part of a franchise that the last movie not many people liked. I walked out of famously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. It was maybe going to be a Hulu movie, and here's a Hulu movie that's going to make a hundred million dollars at the box office, and then do Bafa Stremo on Hulu. Yes, I mean that's the whole thing. Is in the end, every person who would have watched this on Hulu, person. if it went straight to Hulu, person would have is still going to watch this movie and be more excited because it was a theatrical, real movie. Yeah, the 61% drop is better than it could have been. I mean, it seems like it's because nothing new opened this weekend that took IMAX screens from Alien Romulus. So it still was doing good IMAX numbers, upcharge IMAX tickets, and and uh that probably helped it avoid a like 65 plus percent drop. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it, it's it seems like this is a well-regarded horror movie and the next few weeks i guess you know i mean we'll do it on the weekend preview it's probably got one more weekend of doing pretty good business not having anything open that's gonna gonna take that type of uh viewer from it um do you know if there is a national movie theater day coming up 
this coming weekend. Because I feel like that's a gimmick that happens at the end of August. And I remember famously it happened the weekend when Top Gun Maverick made a lot of money at the end of August in its run. And I wonder if that's coming up this weekend. I haven't heard of that. It just October 13th. Mind. Okay. It's so now they moved October it out 13th. of summer. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think this is a fine run, probably better than I think expected. And it's great for Kaylee Spaney. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's necessarily popping from this. This isn't Sydney Sweeney coming off of anyone but you. But Civil War plus Romulus, it's a pretty good run she's on right now. And she's Priscilla. And she's Priscilla. And a Priscilla movie that was an art house success. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And yeah, again, just on the forge, just, just looking at that log line, reading the log line, after graduating high school without any plans for the future... Isaiah receives a push to start making better life decisions. That is your log line for the forge. And I know church bus movies, people just want to see church bus things, but there's no, there's no draw to that log line. Just after high school, a kid wants to make better decisions. That is, that is not theatrical. Well, six point million, some people wanted to see that, and that's more than wanted to see the crow, and more than wanted to see Clint Eastwood as a cockfighter. Yes. So yes, it didn't the Forge just got that it going for it. Yeah, it didn't it didn't cry macho. Um, I mean, you guys talked a lot about Coraline last weekend. It is pretty uh it, it's it's so poetic to see Coraline beat the crow. Yes. Yeah. It just shows the generational thing where like, yeah, Coraline is for the kids. Crow is for sad adults who didn't really go out. Yeah. Um, but now, a second th- weekend of re-release of Coraline beating its, you know, sad boy contemporary, yeah. you know, counterpart. God, it just makes it. That's that's really rubbing the crow's face in the dirt. Yeah. Chicks rule. Now. Yeah. Now, you have nieces, and mm-hmm. they were not born when Coraline came out. But is they were Cor- not. No. But is Coraline the sort of movie that you think they would be into? You know, I haven't. I've. We've never spoken of Coraline. I do. I could see that. I actually. I, I'm going to see them probably in the next week. And I will get a report from them. Do they have any uh, knowledge of Coraline? And if not, I'll show them the trailer and see if this is something they'd be interested in. I mean, listen, they love Nightmare Before Christmas. They yeah. love the Tim Burton aesthetic that, mm-hmm. you know, I-, I think that still plays. So even if they haven't seen Coraline, I would bet that they'll be into it. Uh, if I yeah. if I show them this trailer, so one yeah, I will. Spe- get that one of them specifically, who I will not name to protect their anonymity, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking Coraline, right down the plate. Yes, that's a, I feel like that's a home run movie for this yep. for this young young lady. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Big Jack and Sally fan. I could see that translating to Coraline fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think I think we've covered. What we need to cover. I mean, Deadpool Wolverine, number one again. So there you go. Channing Tatum in the number one movie at the domestic box office. The only thing saving him. And here's the thing. It's sad to think that now people are very excited for this Gambit movie. I mean, could Gambit be the thing that puts him back on top? A superhero. Yeah. It feels like going backwards. I don't think. What is. Okay. What is the actual okay. chances that a Gambit movie happens? Percentage wise, I God, here's my fear, and I think you might even be guessing what my fear is that they try and do it as a Disney Plus series, Jesus you know, Christ. because the Gambit cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine it's purely comedic, you yeah. know, he's talking in an unintelligible accent, very funny, C- Cajun. Yeah, he's doing over the top Cajun accent, and I feel like that might be tough to carry a movie mm-hmm. on. Though I'd rather see that as a movie. I will uh, obviously never watch a second of a Disney Plus streaming show, 
But doesn't that feel like that would be the pitch? What if we did six episodes of the Gambit show set in New Orleans? And I know Dizzy, I know they're moving off of those super expensive shows, which is But smart. that's one they could make an exception for. So you're thinking they're going to go She-Hulk uh, with it where it's comedic. I mean, I think if you're doing unquote, anything comedic. with with Channing Tatum as Gambit, it's going to be comedic. And whether that is a movie, listen, I I think there's a chance I think there's a chance that they say, hey, that is a, a superhero character that people seem to like. You know, they're obviously grasping at straws, getting our DJ back. And, and so it's possible. But I think the deal would have to happen quickly. You know, like you'd almost have to announce it in the next month or two. Hey, we're doing that Gambit movie. Because mm-hmm. after, after that, it sort of becomes... Oh, remember when Gambit had a cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine two years ago? Yeah. Now we're announcing the movie's going to go into production in a year. That it, it needs to be a strike while the iron is hot situation. And I just mm. hope it's not a Disney Plus series, which I could see possibly being the pitch. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, listen, if he does a Gambit movie and he gets 365 shirts come out the same year, Showed off my back. Yeah, showed off my back. That is, that is, that's a comeback there. And Lost City too, you know. Mm, or, get that going. Or, or just get him and Sandra Bullock in a different two-hander together. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Lost City too. I think the two of them teaming up for another rom-com adventure, uh, people love the two of them together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so... There you go. But he's in the number one movie in America, sort of. Um, so, yeah, next episode, Clayton, is going to be possibly huge. We're still working on booking the guest, but we're hoping that our next episode is the fan favorite preview episode for the season, for the fall season. Yeah, so we're, we're right now in negotiations with Jeff Fox people. And hopefully that is the next episode of the BO boys. It's, um, it's and of the, course. Yeah. It, well, it's how, you know, fall's coming. It's not yeah. the emergence of pumpkin spice lattes and the like. It is when we do our triple issue fall preview, that's when, you know, the leaves are going to start turning. Yep. Um, so hopefully that's the next episode. Either way, we will have to preview Reagan movie 2024 is coming out next weekend. So we'll get to that. Hmm, I wonder, um, I wonder if anybody's excited about that movie. I mean, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, you're getting what Clayton's saying. He is showing the Reagan movie 24 hat gifted to him by Jeff Bach showing it right now. And so we will touch on that movie. We got a great email that we'll read next episode from wanna be a boy. Andy sent us an email about a, uh, a partnership with Reagan movie. That is very exciting. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to be a huge episode. We did get an email from Matt and Maine with the headline superhero movies. Aren't dead. Deadpool and Wolverine back to number one at the box office this weekend, only down 39% week to week. Uh, Alien dropped 61%. Superhero, superhero movies aren't dead. Moviegoers just need something that isn't total trash to entice them to theaters. Is the MCU safe? Time will tell regards Matt and Maine. So, yeah, we'll see. Maybe the Gambit movie in five years continues that streak. Thank you. Thank you, Matt and Maine, for that email. Uh, and of course, email us, the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. We want to get your emails for the fall season, predictions for Reagan movie 2024. And of course, weigh in should the BO Boys continue to report domestic box office or go international focused? Let us know, the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. Of course, follow us on social at the bo boys pod we're on twitter x we're on tiktok want to be oh senior intern christopher with the vertical clips um great job christopher also of course we are youtubers hey guys hey guys so subscribe to the bo boys youtube channel this episode will be there you could see 
the hat that Clayton is wearing. You could see the uh, British flag that is on my shirt. When I no neckerchief out. I'm wearing the American West neckerchief I'm wearing. Don't look at Pat. Look at Clayton. Look, uh, look you at know, me. You, look at the American. You Feast could your look eyes at both. on an American male specimen. You could look at both and then no. make your decision. No, you can. You could shake your head at one and nod your head at the other. At, at the same time with the same head. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, everyone. Do or what quick succession and quick succession and quick succession. You know what I meant. Um, of course, uh, live show tickets, links in the show notes there. Uh, also, if you want to get in on the big video that we're going to be showing at the live tour, of course, a lot of people started sending their submissions. You could still send them if you've gotten the instructions. Send in the videos over the next week or two, and uh, it'll be part of the big video on the live tour. And, of course, read the Substack. We've got new stuff. The fall, we're going to be very busy on the Substack for the fall. And I think we might have a fall preview article coming up in the next week. So subscribe, follow us on the B.O. Boys Substack. Link in the show notes there. Five stars on Apple Podcasts. And... Anything else, Clayton? Is there anything that you need to say? Welcome back. And you've said it all. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing left to be said. No, nothing. I got to go back to London. Now. Except for until next time. We'll smell you at the, the... Bye. Bye.